Now, we have all the performers sitting on their stools here because we're going to do a story for you. Uh, now, off of uh, this side of the audience, give me uh, the, the name of one of your relatives that has a really weird name. Bertha. Okay, Bertha. Bertha. And uh, give us the um, name of uh, kind of a building that you work in. Municipal. The municipal building? This is a story. This is a ghost story. This is a story of Bertha and the haunted municipal building. And uh, when I point at these guys, they're going to tell you the story one person at a time. And when I point to the next one, they have to pick off where the other person left off. It's really fun to play. And here we go with Bertha and the haunted municipal building. <laughs> Jimmy broke the window on the basement window of the municipal building. <laughs> Suddenly, they both stopped in mid-sentence. For there in front of them was a giant woman almost eight feet tall. Seven and a half feet tall, to be exact. She was standing there with fire pouring from her eyes and blood dripping from her ears. She was covered in seaweed and had a deck of cards. It was Bertha, the file clerk, who died there 25 years ago. And there she was. It was said that she walked those halls with her deck of cards every night. And who came out of the deck of cards but the sack of spades? Who <laughs> was a jolly fellow, or so it hmm. seemed. He made his way towards Jim and Billy. And he said, hello, boys, would you like a game of chance? <laughs> Just then, something so miraculous happened that even as I talk about it, I still don't understand what it is. One of the kids came across an old file cabinet. He opened it up, and inside ah. was the Birthronomicon. <laughs> It was a book that contained all the magic spells that would dispel Bertha's spirit and make her ectoplasm leave this planet for good if he could only decipher it. And fortunately, he took a class in deciphering Berthonomicon. <laughs> Anywho, he looked in the back, and there in the index under B was Bertha getting rid of. So he started the chant. Luckily, he spoke Latin fluently. <clears throat> Andraponum, Incaponum, Birthraponum knew, he cried. And Jimmy couldn't believe his eyes as oh. she quickly shrunk about a foot and a half. <laughs> and then she was smaller. Small, but still deadly. She started chasing them down the hallway. <laughs> she said in her little mouse voice, even though she was still six foot tall. <laughs> Somehow she got in front of them and put before them a giant requisition form. The boy's eyes widened. She said, press hard. You're making three copies. <laughs> and then they had the final trump card. They turned to Bertha and said, may I see your supervise? Oh. <laughs> Bertha started quaking and quivering, for her supervisor had been dead these long 25 years. Suddenly, the supervisor appeared. He was a giant purple protoplasmic gigantor. Why have you woken me from my nap? And where's my donut? <laughs> Bertha ran off, disappearing forever. And the moral of the story is this one. If you ever break into a municipal building and you're 10 years old and you find yourself being surrounded by bureaucrats from beyond, always ask for the supervisor. <laughs> Here, I'm standing here in front of a green screen. You know what's cool about this? We can make it into anywhere we want. <laughs> oh, magical, magical man! Drew Carey's Green Screen Show, Mondays at 9. Look, it's all explained. How may I serve you, Almighty One? <laughs> <laughs>